the issue of this hour, without question, is now the Obama administration's attempt to claim full credit and politicize the death and killing of Osama bin Laden. And here is the backstory that nobody in the mainstream media is willing to tell you, the listeners of the Savage Nation and the American people. So I will tell you. Through my sources in the administration and through other press accounts that have slowly leaked out, here is what truly happened. May of last year, when our soldiers, our Navy SEALs, surrounded bin Laden and gunned him down like the dog that he was for the mastermind of the murder of 3,000 Americans on September 11, 2001. Obama is told by Leon Panetta, who was then director of the CIA, Mr. President, we have Osama bin Laden. We have him in our crosshairs. We've located him. He's in a compound in Pakistan. We know where he is. We know the compound. Not only do we know where he is and we know the compound, we know how it's guarded, we know how it's fortified, we have sent in our top Navy SEALs, they're already on their way. Mr. President, they're in crossing Pakistan airspace. They can get him in 45 minutes. We need for you to give us the green light. And instead of saying yes... I want you to think about this, because this is the kind of man we have in the Oval Office. I want you to know who who Barack Obama truly is. Instead of saying yes, many of his top advisors are telling him, Mr. President, look at the potential political fallout. What if we don't get him? What if we miss? What if he escapes? It's going to cost you your re-election, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Pakistanis haven't been alerted about this. The Pakistanis, the Musharraf government, could be up in arms. They, forgive me, it was the post-Musharraf government. The post-Musharraf government could be up in arms. We could have jihadists being inflamed by this. They could, this could incite terrorist attacks on American troops all over the world, including Afghanistan. Be careful, Mr. President. We may not want to touch this. Panetta is begging the president, Mr. President, we need an order. And here is what he said. Obama says, I will sleep on it. I will sleep on it. You will sleep on it? This man who has the blood of 3,000 Americans on his hands? The greatest war criminal in the world? who committed the greatest atrocity on American soil in our history? Single act of atrocity? And you're sleeping on it? Next morning, Panetta again is on the door. Mr. President, time is running out. It's been almost 24 hours. Somebody may tip off bin Laden. He may get away. And it was Panetta who practically twisted Barack Obama's arm and said, Mr. President, we need a green light now before it's too late. And finally, under pressure from Panetta and the pressure from the chiefs of staff and the top military brass, this guy finally caves and gives the order. Now, all of a sudden, he's Caesar. Now, all of a sudden, he's George Washington. Now, all of a sudden, he's Harry Truman. Or Dwight Eisenhower. Now he's the man with the political courage and the guts, the the Iron Man, the statesman who killed Osama bin Laden when he he lost his nerves, when he was practically cracking up in the Oval Office because he couldn't make a decision. It's unbelievable the hypocrisy in this administration. Uh, I disagree with Obama on practically everything. I, I honestly, I, there's, I don't think there's an issue he and I agree on. However, do I think he deserves partial credit? Yes, he did give the order. In the end, he gave the order. He may have hesitated. He may have slept on it for 24 hours. He may have been cowardly. He may have lost his nerve. But in the end, uh, Panetta forced him and he made the right decision. However, what I think is the height of hypocrisy, to me, the height of phoniness, the height of cynicism, is to get Osama bin Laden 
they had to use the very same enhanced interrogation techniques that they criticized. They criticized the surveillance techniques that Bush implemented. So all of those Bush national security policies that led to the killing of Osama bin Laden were criticized by the Democrats, were criticized by Hillary Clinton, and were criticized by Barack Obama. So now, all of a sudden, he's trying to take credit for something that, frankly, the Bush national security apparatus laid the groundwork for. No George Bush, no dead Osama bin Laden. And what about the Navy SEALs? This is, to me, what blows my mind away. Those are the guys that deserve the real credit. It wasn't uh, Barack Obama. He wasn't Rambo. The way the liberal media would spin it, you'd think he personally went down on some kind of a wire with two machine guns, uh, slaughtering everybody in his way to get Osama bin Laden. It was the Navy SEALs who killed him. So, uh, you know, look what he's done. Let's just stand back objectively. What has this man now done? He really has one accomplishment in the last three and a half years. One, really, one serious, credible accomplishment. Bin Laden is dead. And we Republicans and Democrats, and we conservatives and liberals, we Americans, we are divided on everything. We don't agree on anything. But there's one thing that has unified us. Was that night when the news came out that that barbarian, that butcher, finally got his due and was shot dead. The whole country rang out in celebration. In baseball games, at baseball parks, at bars, people began singing patriotic songs. We were no longer just liberals and conservatives, Republicans and Democrats, red state and blue state. For once in the last 10 years, we were Americans. It was the one thing that unified us. And even this, he's going to politicize. Even this, he's going to use as a cynical attempt to, uh, to win re-election in November 2012. Mr. President, have you no shame? Do you believe Obama deserves the credit? And does it offend you that he's politicizing it? Jeff Cooner, sitting in for Michael Savage, will take your calls right after this break.